Hello, I'm Associate Professor Greg Feely and it's my pleasure today to be joined in conversation with Bill Farmer, um, who is Ambassador to Indonesia and also a very distinguished public servant in Australia, including uh, Secretary of the Department of Immigration and Multicultural Affairs, but now retired, but still frequently visiting Indonesia. And uh, Bill, uh, your view of how the Australian-Indonesian relationship is going, I know that you have made a few public comments where you've expressed regret about some of the recent developments. I wonder if you could uh, tell us a little bit about your views on the bilateral relationship in the last few years. Look, I think we've come to one of the periodic low points in our, uh, our relationship. Uh, and that's unfortunate because certainly over many years our governments have tried to build up what uh, we've called ballast in the relationship. People to people contacts, business uh, contacts, contacts between our security forces, our customs, our immigration, our fisheries people. Uh, all of the, the sorts of, uh, of elements of a relationship which enable Australians and Indonesians to work together. And we have worked together really well and continue to do that. Uh, although that's not always evident from the, from the public uh, discourse. But I think that uh, we've, we've seen, perhaps over a 10 year period, a vast change in the way that our two countries have dealt with each other. A change away from Australia's dealing with the authoritarian regime of President Suharto, where essentially if President Suharto was on side, everything else fell into place. Now we have two messy, vigorous, robust uh, uh, democracies with uh, anyone from the most intelligent to the lamest rat bag being able to say what they like. Uh, and that inevitably makes things uh, much more, uh, more complicated than it might have been uh, 10 or 15 uh, years ago. I think it's very unfortunate uh, when we have the political uh, leadership in both, uh, both countries uh, really looking at short term uh, political uh, gains for domestic political reasons, as we've seen in both Australia and Indonesia over this last uh, 18 months, in the context both of uh, election campaigns, but also when dealing with, with particular uh, issues. And I think it, it is unfortunate when, when some of the, the appeals that are made to, to popular sentiment in, in each country really overlook the fact that whatever's said in Australia is going to be repeated in, uh, in Indonesia. Whatever's said in Indonesia is going to be repeated in, uh, in Australia. And, and raising the temperature uh, unnecessarily seems to me very uh, unfortunate. How much would you put down the current, you mentioned that we're currently at a kind of one of the regular nadirs of the relationship, and how much would you put that down to the personalities of the people who are leading both countries or senior key ministers in the governments of both countries? And how much do you, or how much do you put this down to broader societal attitudes for better or for worse? Both countries are democracies and politicians are very mindful of what the broader electorate says. Very good question. I, th I think that we can illustrate that in part by looking at the difference between President Yudhoyono and the current president of Indonesia, President uh, Jokowi. Yudhoyono was really predisposed to looking at cooperation with Australia through a positive lens. He was ready to expand the range of things that we worked uh, together on. With President Jokowi, I don't think we have that mindset. Uh, we certainly does not seem to be as interested in international issues as President Yudhoyono. So that's one way, I mean, that's a benign way, if you like, it's just a difference in, in personality and, uh, and approach. But I think also that uh, it, it is possible to examine this question of the role of leadership uh, in, a, in a democracy when we're dealing with close neighbours as we are between Australia and, and Indonesia. For example, the, the question of the, the, the impending execution and then the execution of two Australians uh, in Indonesia earlier this year. I think that our, our political leadership began very well. They, they were doing exactly the, the right thing. They were making high level approaches to ministers, to the, to the president, reflecting very clearly deeply held views among the Australian uh, the community. Uh, and that I think was, was appropriate. I think we went off the tracks though, uh, when, when our government seemed to be scrambling around for additional things to, uh, to say, 
additional arguments to, to put in, a, in an environment where it seemed pretty clear to me anyway uh, that we'd had our say, we are not going to sway Indonesia, uh, and that making some, I think, somewhat inflammatory uh, statements uh, was going to be quite, quite counterproductive. So there's a balance that political leaders always have to, uh, to, to look for uh, in leading a democracy, but also in managing our diplomatic and uh, foreign relations in ways that are conducive to Australian interests. I was very interested, I've heard you say publicly, compare, I know it's a hypothetical, but compare how Australia, the very strong Australian response to the execution of the Bali II in Indonesia, compared to, for example, if an Australian was on death row and facing execution in one of the many American states that still has the death penalty, and whether Australia would say the kinds of things and take the kinds of retaliatory action that it did take in the Indonesia case. Would you be willing to, to um, perhaps um, talk about some of those, those views that you have on that? Yeah. Well, it, it, it is obviously a hypothetical case, but uh, it, it bears on a, a broader issue. Do we think about our relationship with the United States or with New Zealand in terms of a whole set of issues and problems? No, we don't. Uh, how do we think about our relationship with, with Indonesia? Too often, I think, we immediately do, and I'm guilty, as guilty of this as anyone, we immediately go into the listing of the, the issues and, uh, and problems. Uh, and th there's a mindset there that I think is not, not helpful and one that we, we should change for the, uh, for the, uh, for the future. But you know, if, if notwithstanding Australian representations in the hypothetical case of uh, an execution of an Australian by an American state, if our representations uh, had, had failed, would we impose a freeze on uh, ministerial contacts with the United States? Would we withdraw our ambassador from the uh, United States? It's a question I did just invite everyone to, to think about. Yeah. Just coming back to this issue of public attitudes, and in particular to the boat, boat people issue in Australia, and how Australia has handled that. In Indonesia, there are very few people who are sympathetic to the arguments that Australia puts. But in, within Australia, I'm fairly certain that the view of the Abbott government is that this is one of their strong political pluses, that they have stopped the boats. And indeed, the Prime Minister says this uh, repeatedly. Uh, so this seems to be a case where the electorate, or at least those parts of the electorate that are responsible for putting a government in uh, are strongly the view that we need to stop the boats. And so the government pursues that vigorously, even though Indonesians are often very irritated by the way in which we do this. So how is a government in a democratic system like Australia to respond to those pressures? Because the Prime Minister, senior ministers are on talkback radio, they're hearing regularly how strongly public sentiment is on this. And so what do we expect from our diplomats, from our leaders in this circumstance? Yeah. Look, in, in that circumstance, with, with a, a very strong domestic political uh, imperative, any diplomat understands the environment in which they're, uh, they're working. Uh, their, their government is, is set on a course. I think that's, uh, that's important. I think it's also important, though, to, to remember that there are positives in the turnaround uh, issue from the Indonesian point of view. Positives that they won't necessarily uh, be, be uh, very keen to, uh, to point out. Stopping the pull factor means that Indonesia would not be suffering the sorts of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, arrivals into Indonesia and the concomitant social and other problems that it's faced over the last uh, 10, uh, 10 years. Uh, now, saying that simpliciter is not a winning argument with, uh, with Indonesia. But having a discussion broadly based uh, with a neighbour uh, and a, a, a country with which we've cooperated over, over many years uh, is, I think, something where you can actually have a discussion, you can introduce uh, perspectives, you can uh, agree to disagree even, and we've certainly done that on numbers of issues over the, uh, over the years. I'd, I'd much rather have the discussion uh, on a continuing basis uh, between governments than run it uh, through the headlines where we're both essentially yelling past each other. 
I've heard you be critical in public of the recall of the Australian ambassador. So this would seem a case in point where the public was almost demanding um, a very concrete retaliation by the Australian government to that. And if I've recalled correctly, you don't feel that was in fact a particularly helpful response by us. Could you talk a little bit about your yeah. views on this? I think the, uh, uh, the lower opinion polls show that in fact the majority of Australians didn't approve of, uh, of that, uh, that measure. Uh, it's the first time we've withdrawn our ambassador from, from Indonesia, notwithstanding a whole history of very severe difficulties in our relationship with, uh, with that country, including periods when our soldiers were shooting at each other, uh, periods when Australian journalists were massacred by Indonesian uh, uh, soldiers in, uh, in East Timor, uh, periods of real political uh, the sensitivity. And so, no, I, I didn't agree with, uh, with that. I think that the role of the ambassador is to work in that country uh, on uh, issues affecting Australia's uh, bilateral uh, interests. And I would say the same thing about the, the idea of, uh, of putting a freeze onto ministerial uh, contacts. Uh, I just don't, don't think myself that the, the momentary gratification of saying, let's withdraw the ambassador, let's have a freeze, I don't think that that is worth the, the, the period then of lack of contact and lack of certainty that you, that you have. Uh, a period when you have to essentially scrabble around and say, well, what's the criterion for, for our resuming ministerial contacts? It's a question that's quite difficult to, to, uh, to answer and I'd much rather it hadn't been raised. <laughs> a final question. Do you have uh, much optimism about the relationship the bilateral relationship over the next five or so years. We have Jokowi in office for another four and a half years. Um, the Abbott government is facing a, an election next year, but it's very unlikely that public dynamics that influence our governments are going to change a lot. So do you think that we will be consigned to having the kind of regular um, uh, sources of tension that we have now? Well, Greg, when I was ambassador, I was paid to be optimistic as well as realistic. Now I do it for nothing. Uh, and I, I essentially do think that, uh, that if, if we can uh, approach issues uh, in the right way, bearing in mind the enormous uh, ar array of cooperation or ballast, you might say, in the, the relationship, we've got a foundation for, for working well uh, uh, together. You know, I'd be saying you know, over this next uh, 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 few months, we should be resuming ministerial contacts. We should be uh, looking at uh, ways of negotiating a closer economic partnership agreement. We should be introducing more Australian business people to Indonesia. We should be sending our young Australian scholars to Indonesia under the new Colombo plan. Uh, we should be resuming the sorts of contacts that we have between all sorts of government uh, agencies which have stood us in good stead uh, uh, over time. And to the extent that, uh, that we can get the political discourse uh, disciplined in a way uh, that, that puts an appropriate chapeau over all of that uh, activity, I think we'd be, uh, be doing, uh, doing well. There's obviously a question mark uh, uh, about it. I'm not a doomsayer and, and I hope that we as two countries can get it right. Thank you very much, Bill Farmer, for giving up your time for us to talk about some of the relations in the bilateral, some of the issues in the bilateral relationship. And uh, we look forward to perhaps getting your comments again uh, in one of these ANU forums. Thank you. Thanks so much, Greg.